In this video, we're looking at how to record commission income and commission checks that you will receive as a real estate agent. And we're looking at how to record it into QuickBooks online. Now, there's two ways that we can kind of handle this. One is sort of the, the simplest, easiest way, but it doesn't offer as much financial insight into your data. And the other one is a little bit more detailed and requires a little bit more information and knowledge about the accounting process so that we can essentially properly account for our broker expenses. And let me, I'm showing you an example of a uh, example profit and loss here where you'll see that we've recorded commission incomes and then we see commissions paid out to our office. This based on the definitions and how I've set up the chart of accounts and how I recommend it for real estate agents is that this commissions to office is essentially the amount that you would be paying to your broker and the amount that you're paying or that you're receiving in commission is actually the total gross commission income check. So on a $200,000 house at 3% uh, commission, that would be a 6,000 commission income. And after you pay your broker, you would be left with your amount at your gross profit. And that's usually, unless you put other stuff in your cost of goods sold accounts, that this is going to be equal to the kind of the 1099 or the tax form that you would receive at the end of the year from your broker. And so we recommend the more detailed method so that you can sort of see exactly what you're paying out to your broker. And it allows for better reporting and comparison to benchmark against other real estate agents and kind of the industry of how you're comparing to everybody else. So to, in order to do that, there's basically two ways, like I said, that you can set this up and we'll go with the simplest way. Often what's going to happen is under your bank transactions, assuming you set up your bank transactions inside of QuickBooks here, you just go to your trans bank transaction side of things under live bookkeeping, you'll select transactions. And so let's, let's say you make a deposit to, from your commission check. So you receive your $4,800 commission check. Now I don't have an example. I didn't receive a deposit, but let's just say that I received a $4,800 deposit. Essentially, all I would do is I would just click on the, the transaction here. And then I would just simply categorize it to the appropriate account, uh, the appropriate income account. So whatever that might be, if we're doing listing income, or list transaction fees or whatever it might be. Now, if you received one complete check, for example, uh, for the amount, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to actually see and break it down if you want to track, say, your commission income as well as your transaction fee income. Because, you know, usually you'll receive just one check, a single check from your broker, which may be broken up by the income type and your books and your bookkeeping and your reports aren't going to accurately show that. But for tax purposes, it would be okay to do this. But we, again, don't recommend it as it doesn't really give you the financial insight you really need into your numbers. So that's like the easiest, simplest method. The other method that that is still pretty simple that we recommend if you're not going to keep track of your broker split is to actually just make a, a sales receipt when you receive your income check. So you'll just go to the new section here and you'll click on sales receipt and you'll create a new one. As soon as it loads here, you'll under customer, you'll select your customer. Let's say we want to say buyer uh, number one is the person that purchased from us. And so we make, you know, that's the buyer, that, that's the customer. And we don't really care about a lot of this stuff. You can just hit save. We don't really need a whole lot of that information. And then where you're going to deposit it to, you're going to deposit it to the account. And so what's going to happen is when you actually deposit the amount, what's going to happen in the transactions is, is rather than categorizing it, you're going to have to match it under your banking transaction. But all you would do is you would just hit your product and service here. Uh, let's say that we do listing income and, you know, we want to reflect it at, at 4,800, you know, essentially we could say that's a $200,000 house at 3% commission with a 80 with a 80 20 split. And all you would do is you would just go ahead and hit save and that'll show up for your report. Uh, just make sure that your date is set to the appropriate date that you want to receive the income or that you're receiving the check. 
from your broker and that would have your listing income. Now you can do the same thing if you wanted to do the same thing for transaction income. So you can see I don't have it set up. So if you don't have any products or services set up, you're going to have to hit new. And then you're going to have to go ahead and hit service and you're going to have to say, let's just call it transaction fee, you know, and you'll have to do this for both buyers and sellers. And then we want to make sure that we're attaching it to the appropriate income account. In this case, let's call it our sales transaction fee income, save and close. And we also got that for the transaction fee, we got 425. And so we can see that we've gotten paid 5225 and you're just going to hit save because we're not sending it to anybody. And so that amount is going to, so when you go into your banking feed and you're categorizing your transactions, you should see an, a, a deposit of 5225 and you're going to have to match it. And again, make sure that it's set to deposit whatever bank account that you're going to be uh, depositing it into. And then you're, and like I said, you're just going to match it under the bank transaction fees. Now this doesn't, this is okay. I have nothing wrong with this. This is just assuming you take your split, but again, it doesn't really provide the information that you actually need for evaluating your broker and the cost of your broker. So what we recommend is that you actually take your listing income and rather doing that, we just recommend not taking the split and writing the full value. So in this case, it'll be uh, 6,000. And what will happen of course with this is it's not gonna match anything for your bank account if you're going to do it the sales receipt way. And so you'll have to ignore or exclude that transaction from your bank account. So really, a lot of times to keep it uh, easier, we just say, go ahead and, and write it like this. That way you can match the transaction. And then what we recommend is you just pull a general journal entry to account for the splits here in this case. So you're going to go ahead and on the left bar, hit new. And under here, you're going to make a journal entry right here where it says other. And it'll pull something up and you'll just want to make sure that you're matching it to the date that you receive the check. So we'll say uh, April 3rd, 2023. And we're going to credit the account, whatever sales income account that or income account that we are. So whether that's listing account, listing income or sales income we're gonna go ahead and record something. We're going to go ahead and credit that account. And then we wanna make sure that we're debiting the appropriate account where the broker was paid out of. And so let's say you also have transaction fees. You can say sales income, uh, because let's say we said 425 in the previous example. Well, let's take an example and say that really we charged 500 and my broker actually took $75 of that and we only got the 25. This way the transaction income is actually appropriately recorded all the way. And then we will say brokerage transaction fees, they actually got 75. And then you would just hit save and close. And we have a corresponding general journal entry to the uh, transaction that would have been recorded in terms of uh, our income here. And so then we show the appropriate gross commission income that we're seeing for uh, that that transaction. And why do we recommend this? I, it's, it's, it's the biggest reason I recommend it is because of the only other way to get this information is if you're, if you're lucky enough that your broker produces a statement every single time they give you a check and stuff like that. But sometimes that's not always the case. Brokers won't always produce these statements or you, or they get lost or wherever they are. But by pulling this number, we can see that what our total GCI is because theoretically we could operate and ask ourselves the question inside of our real estate business. If we were able to, uh, if we were able to get our commission to a hundred percent split, how much money or how much would we actually grow in that revenue number? And that's a lot easier to answer when we're sort of looking at our entire commission uh, income and our entire income revenue wise. Now there might be some debates, your tax account might advise against this and that sort of a stuff, but we're not really setting these books up uh, just for the purpose of tax accounting, because at the end of the day, yes, tax accounting is important and it's, we're making sure that we're still compliant, but we want to make sure that our numbers mean something to us and that we're able to learn something of value from our numbers and that we're able to drive business insights from those numbers.